This right here is the DS-7 18 Plus. Actually the very first NAS I ever bought, the very first technology I ever bought. This right here is the DS-1522 Plus. And when it came out, it came out with a special new adding card right here. The E10G22-T1-Mini. This card right here was a turning point for Synology. So this was having first time you've got 10 gigabit, gigabit capability on a five bay NAS, but it was also really the very first time they introduced this new adding card that was not a standard PCIe adding card. This card and the card in there are essentially the exact same thing. They are a 10 gigabit RJ45 card made by Synology. This one takes up a lot more space in it. And so they decided to come up with their own custom PCIe card. And that drove a lot of people away, absolutely understandably. So we're gonna talk about the fact that these cards are very likely to show up on the DS923 Plus and maybe its companions. And I don't know how I feel about that. Obviously in a vacuum, that statement is great. If you took a 928 Plus when it was first announced, and right then it had the option for that adding card, I would have immediately praised them for adding that. Even though that is a proprietary card that you have to buy through Synology, it's $150, $160. It still would have been a great improvement to that device because now it brings 10 gigabit compatibility. But today is not three years ago. Today is today and you have to face the competition. So most other NASs, QNAP, ASUS Store, pretty much everybody now is shipping on their kind of higher end models. Not even that higher end ones, like just the ones that have four bays, but the plus ones, essentially the 920 plus competitors are shipping 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports on the back of them. And that is something I really was predicting that Synology would do. Instead, if rumors are going to be true, normally I don't make videos just about pure rumors, but if rumors are to be held with true, the 923 plus will not be getting 2.5 gigabit ethernet on there as I had hoped, but they will be getting this 10 gig adding card. And so I think that decision is both the right and wrong decision to be made. All right, and so I wanna kind of make this video looking at it in two different lights. And my goal for this video is to just give my thoughts because the answer to the choice of whether or not that was terrible of them to do is going to be up to every single one of the people watching. It's going to come up to you Hey, did I like that? Is that good? Is that beneficial to me? Or do I wish they had gone for 2.5 gigabit? So for the first part of this video, we are going to talk about whether or not they should have gone with 2.5 gigabit. We're gonna talk about in a world where there's two options. You either have 2.5 gigabit on the back port, two of them, or you have two one gigabit ethernet ports or four one gigabit ethernet ports and this 10 gig add-in card. So let's go ahead and open it up and kind of talk about the two different realms and from a consumer perspective, which one I would prefer, assuming that you can't get both. We'll talk about getting both later on, but assuming you can't get both, let's talk about that. So this card, I will say for an adding card perspective, is phenomenally easy to install and uninstall. So just live on air right there, I was able to trivially pull it out and install it. So from a perspective where you're not great with computers, you don't wanna be opening up the case, this is a great little piece of equipment. It's exposed from the outside, so it's just as easy as adding in new RAM modules when they're on the bottom. It takes two screws to unscrew, slots in there, and there's nothing about it that you have to worry about. The price of it is not cheap. This is $160. This, essentially the same card from Synology, is uh, I think right now $120, $130. It fluctuates, but the beauty of this card and the other realm that people use is it has a PCIe card in there. So theoretically, you can throw in any card in there and assuming it's got compatibility with Linux and Synology is not like blocked it out or anything, it will work. It may have some issues because it's been untested and yada, 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 but you, if you're looking to save a buck, you can save some money. And so the card I've been recommending people for, hey, I wanna save like 30, 40 bucks, is about 80, 90 dollars. And so that is the 10 gigabit option if you wanna do it yourself. But I will say, when a client asks, I pretty much always just recommend this card. Primarily because I'm generally consulting with businesses and saving 40 bucks and then having a crucial issue where people are locked out of the file server and you just have a failure 
it's just not worth it. it. It is absolutely worth it for them to pay the money up front just knowing if they ever need support. If they ever need anything like that, they're not going to get grief for it. And so because of that, I say it's probably a $30 upgrade for most people. But having that port instead of the regular PCIe port means you cannot use SFP plus stuff, which absolutely sucks. So I have my entire 10 gigabit setup for my home lab on SFP plus, which means that this device right here cannot do SFP plus. There is a real advantage to it from a space perspective. This takes up so much less space in the chassis. So if you're just looking and asking yourself, did Sonali do this just for the money? I will say they absolutely factored in money into it. But at the end of the day, I do think there are a lot of advantages to having their own custom card that is really an easy drop in replacement. That's not to say that the, deci the final decision was not highly, highly, highly influenced by the fact that they're going to be making a lot of money from this. And they do seem to be going to a more proprietary ecosystem for their business class units. But they definitely did at least build a card that has advantages over regular PCIe cards, namely the fact that the NAS can be significantly smaller, as well as the fact that it is very easy to install. So that is kind of my thoughts on the card. Now let's ask ourselves, would you rather have a built-in 2.5 gigabit card or a optional upgrade for the 10 gigabit card right here? So the question comes down to, for most users, is 10 gigabit worth it for an extra $160 upgrade? And that is a really interesting point. So for first off, there is some older enterprise gear, the Switch X16 that Unify makes, that does not support the multi-speed gig. So that means that if it had just built in 2.5 gigabit ports, then it would not be able to operate at that 2.5 gigabit speed. Now that being said, that's not a great argument due to the fact that most of that stuff is really kind of the enterprise focused stuff. And a DS923 plus is not enterprise. It is really designed for the, the home or the small business user. The other argument is there's a cost savings by not adding in 2.5 gigabit ports. I would say that that's pretty a small use case that actually saves money. From my understanding, just from reading online and just people who deal with this, who is actually buying the thousands and thousands of gigabit network equipment, the cost difference between going 2.5 gigabit and one gigabit from the motherboard perspective is pretty darn cheap. And from what I also understand, the AMD CPUs they're looking at using also have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet built in. So because of that, if we say that there was a very small, maybe a $10 upgrade for them, which is absolutely way more than it actually costs, but say they charge $10 for the upgrade, versus this, $160. I think when you look at most people, most people are going to be running this thing at one gigabit. I'd say 80% of the people, believe it or not, 80% of the people who purchase this NAS are gonna be running at one gigabit. 2.5 gigabit is just now coming in. And so 80% of those people probably are gonna be running one gigabit and then are gonna be accessing the NAS over Wi-Fi. That's just the class that these machines tend to be in. And so it's not a crazy thing to add. It is really not a crazy thing to add, but it's still unfortunate because there's a lot of people who are the home lab type people who the DS923 plus would have been a perfect entry point into them for this. And having that super cheap upgrade to 2.5 gigabit, I mean, when you've got four disks that you'll be able to saturate the 2.5 gigabit, but you're not gonna be able to fully saturate 10 gigabit, maybe get 700 reading right out of it that is so worth it for a lot of people. And so that's where I do think there is a bit of a draw there. I think that there's a lot of value in having the ability to upgrade to 10 gigabit, especially for people who want to upgrade later on. It gives it the ability to say, I don't need it up front and add it later on, but still coming out with a $500 device that does not have 2.5 gigabit ports on it, especially in this day and age, it's a tough sell. It is a really tough sell in my opinion. Even though in all reality, the majority of the people who purchase the unit will be plugging it into a one gigabit switch. And even probably half of those people are going to be accessing it over Wi-Fi. So it's one of those things where is the end user, the person who's not watching this video, the person who's just going to go out and buy one and use it for their office, they will never notice and never know what they missed out on. 
So I think between the two options, I think that I wish they had added 2.5 gigabit networking instead of the 10 gig cart in a vacuum where that was an option. So essentially where you only could choose one of the two, I think I would prefer the built-in 2.5 gigabit networking primarily because of the existence of this unit right here. This is the DS1522 Plus. And if rumors are true, essentially the DS923 Plus is gonna be this unit minus a bay. And so because of the existence of this unit right here, it does not make a ton of sense to have a very similar unit to it that is essentially identical, just one minus bay. I think it would have been very valuable for them to have the market segment where it's like, hey, if you want 2.5 gigabit just built in, you can get that unit and kind of make it a class of its own. Whereas put the business users, people who are really gonna be running this as the office file server, focus on this unit and have some kind of performance options between the two. That I think might be what I wish, but in all reality, these are just kind of my raw thoughts here. It could have gone either way. I do think that it's not a horrible option either way. I'm very glad they're introducing the card, but I do really wish instead they had at least added 2.5 gigabit networking to it. All right, and so now let's go down the path where let's say it's good guy Synology. Let's say they, they actually added both 2.5 gigabit networking and 10 gig optional adding card. I don't think that world really makes a ton of sense. So for the DS920 Plus, unless you're putting SSDs in it, you're going to be seeing about maybe 700 megabytes per second read and write. That's assuming everything's going perfectly. And so your 2.5 gigabit networking card gives you half that. It gives you about 300 read and write. So that is not a huge disparity to add a custom card for every single one of these units especially considering how the majority of the people, as I said earlier, are going to be accessing it over one gigabit. So I honestly, I don't think there's a real use case for having both. I, I think that it would have added a lot of cost to a lot of the units. And I do not think it would have added a ton of value because I don't think there would have been a lot of people who really felt like this four bay unit, oh, it would have been perfect had it just had 10 gig capability but they also want a 2.5 gig capability. Instead, if you're looking for 10 gig capability, go with this guy right here, the DS1522 Plus, who's going to have more beef under the hood probably. It's gonna have more RAM. It is going to have the ability to actually saturate a 10 gigabit connection because it's got five drives. And so it's gonna get about one gigabyte per second when everything's perfect. And so that is kind of my closing thought is I don't think there's really a reasonable world where Synology would have shipped both. But as for which one I would have preferred, I think I'm leaning more heavily towards having the built-in 2.5 gigabit networking, but it's not a surprise to me that they did not add that. This card right here changes a lot of things when it comes to predictions on what Synology is gonna do because it is trying not to eat itself up in market share. Am I surprised that they are going to not be having the 2.5 gigabit networking after that card became existent? No. It was probably the most logical option for Synology to do when Synology is looking at maximizing their profit. And in all honesty, that's just fact. There's gonna be a lot of people in the comments below who say, Synology is gonna lose a ton of market share. Synology is not going to survive as a company, all those things. And for the small home lab community, that is, it's a significant portion of Synologies that are looking for this stuff they might lose some. They might lose some to QNAP. But in all reality, those systems have had a lot of vulnerabilities. So I think Synology is able to look in the back there and say, you know what? This is a bit of a risk, but it is going to be it financially. And that's not me condoning their behavior. That is me just analyzing it from a business perspective because I don't think it's gonna drive away the consumers like the people in those comments are gonna make it seem like. All right, well, that was kind of just a jumble of my thoughts that I've been wanting to down. The goal was it to just try to inform, honestly. Try to give information on how everything works and what, how surprised I was when this happened and say it's not the right choice, but it's also not the wrong choice necessarily to do that. And I think a lot of people are going to get that 923 plus 
and gonna be very happy that down the line, if they need faster speed, they can get faster speeds. And that's what it kind of summarizes to. I do think that a lot of people, even myself, when I think about it, I don't know of a lot of clients who I've had consulting with who actually have 2.5 gigabit networking built out. I think in the future, it's gonna be a lot more common, but I don't think Synology is gonna lose a ton of market share over it. Even though I do wish they had some units with 2.5 built in. All right, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm not a Synology shill, even though I sound like one sometimes. All right, bye. <laughs>